This learning objective talks about the mapping of the watershed and stream network using a DEM. So in this process, again, at the core, we are using slope and aspect, which come from the elevation. But what we do is we find all the area, um, all the slow, uh, flow directions in an area. So given a cell, if I know the slope and the aspect, that tells me which way is the direction of steepest descent. And since water flows towards the path of steepest, steepest descent or steepest gradient, that gives me the flow direction uh, for that pixel. And if I have flow directions of all the pixels com computed, then I can see where they are converging and where they will form a stream. And if I know the stream, I can figure out what area is contributing to a given stream or a given point on the stream, which is the definition of the watershed. So potentially DEM can be used to determine how, what is the drainage network of an area and what is the watershed for a given point of interest. So the basic steps in the watershed delineation start with the DEM conditioning. DEM conditioning is a process where we fill all the missing data gaps in the DEM because if there is a missing point in DEM, the slope at that point will be undefined, which will result in everything going towards that point most likely because it will serve as a sink. So we want to remove those kind of points or fill those points. The other thing we do is we don't want to have artificial depressions um, that would lead all the streams to go to that depression. Typically from a watershed there will be an outlet. So we condition where we raise these little depressions so that all the streams are formed and they go to the outlet of the watershed. Um, the first step after um, conditioning the, the delineation part is called flow direction measurement first. And in this case each point um, for each point the four the eight neighboring pixels are compared and whichever is the lowest pixel in the neighborhood is the path of the steepest uh, descent. And in ArcMap, those directions are coded. So east, if the path towards the east is 1, um, southeast is 2, south is 4, southwest is 8, and so on and so forth. These are all powers of 2. And the powers of 2 are for the purpose of using only one byte to save this information. Um, basically, in the, there are 8 bits in a byte, and whichever bit is on, will tell us which direction um, the, the flow will happen. So here is a map of flow directions. And the, so for example, gray directions are all eastward paths. And so if we look at this um, cyan direction 64, these correspond to north. Um, 64 corresponds to north, so all of these are north-facing slopes. The next step is finding flow accumulation. So flow directions can be used to find where all of the flow is being accumulated. And for each cell, a value is assigned, and that value is the sum of all the pixels that are contributing to that cell. So as you can see, that the cells that are in the um, upstream limits are dark but as we start moving towards the downstream the brightness is increasing which means the value is larger which means there are more and more pixels contributing as we go towards downstream direction and through this process of flow accumula accumulation we also see the emergence of the stream network um, as these bright lines in the flow accumulation. Now, when the next step, which will be on the next slide, is stream thresholding. 
and that is where we start the definition of the stream so if I threshold that for with this value at this point I'm going to define a stream so any value larger than that accumulation will become a stream and so stream threshold is a process of telling where the stream begins because technically it's an arbitrary definition if you go in the in the mountains and see where the actual stream starts then it could be it, it, it has many levels. It could be starting at a very small centimeter scale um, as very small gullies. And then it could become larger by um, combining these small little links of uh, gullies could combine together to form bigger streams. And so the definition of stream itself could be very arbitrary and depends upon the scale at which you're looking at. Now, it's typically, um, the stream threshold is done based upon two methods. One is a percentage of the total area. Let's say um, if the, um, the, the threshold could, could be when 1% of the area has contributed, and that would, that's where the stream begins. Or it could be the distance from the ridge of the watershed. So a lot of times you have um, some research shows that at 300 feet from the upstream end of the watershed, a stream starts to form. So there are many arbitrary methods that can be used to, to set the threshold. And once the threshold is set, any flow accumulation larger than th that threshold value results into a stream. And this is the production of a stream network. Initially, it's a raster data, but that can be converted into a vector data through GIS uh, methods. Then, now, once we have the stream network, we can set our point of interest anywhere, and that point of interest is called a pore point. So here, the, these square uh, symbols are pore points. So <clears throat> by setting these pore points, what we are interested in knowing how much watershed area contributes to this point, or what is the area from where every drop of water will eventually flow to this point? And that is the process where we basically find the ridges of a watershed. And everything within that ridge is the watershed. So overall, the process of watershed and stream delineation includes uh, filling the, the gaps in the DEM, which is DEM conditioning then finding flow directions, then using flow directions to find flow accumulations, then thresholding the flow accumulations to get stream streams, then selecting a pore point on the stream, and finally creating a watershed for that pore point.